In the light of the recent Vulture article and trigger warnings and the code of silence being mentioned again, I thought we should talk about book reviews again. And mostly what they should or can or should and can't do. All of that from my perspective, of course, and what I think a book review is for. So let's start by looking at the different kinds of book reviews. We have written book reviews and we have spoken book reviews. And in between those categories, we also have varying varieties. When it comes to written book reviews, we can have them very long, extensive analytical as in literary magazines and articles you find. Or you can have them very short one-liners on Amazon. In between that, you find long or short blog articles or long or short Goodreads Amazon reviews. They can be more detailed or not. The same goes for the spoken ones. We have them on the radio and TV. And what we want to focus on mostly probably is the booktube community. Here we also have different levels of analysis and detailed or just short, I love the book. And all of that is valid and fine. That's not the point what I'm talking about here. What I want to talk about is first what a book review should do or can do, and then expectations just not to have of a book review. So let's start by telling you how I use book reviews. I rarely use written reviews, definitely not before I read a book. I usually come to them after I read the book, mostly on Goodreads to see what my friends have thought about the book or the people I follow, or if it's a hype book and I didn't like it, I want to know what people liked about the book. More analytical and long reviews in literary magazines I seek out when I have questions about the book, when I'm not really sure I understood what I read. Then I go in that direction. I rarely read blogs, I have to admit that, and I don't think I've ever read an Amazon book review. The kind of book review I use before I read a book is mostly from BookTube. Here I hear about a new book and then I get interested and then I want to read it. That's how that works. So what do I expect from a book review? Not a lot. I expect it to give me an idea of a book. I want it to tell me a little bit about the plot, but not too much, not too many details, no twists and turns, no, yeah, just an idea, not a detailed description or long plot summary. Be warned, I skip them. I have a lot of friends here on BookTube who have long plot summaries, but I know that, so I skip the part and go to where they talk about the book and give me their opinion. That is the second thing I want from a book review. A book review needs to tell me the opinion of the book reviewer. Like, what did you like about the book? What didn't you like about the book? And give me examples not extensive, not too detailed. Because if you like the book and I want to read it, I don't want to hear all the good things. But give me an idea, give me opinions, give me reasons. Not just, I love the book, read it. And that's already what I want from a book review. When it comes to what I don't want a book review to do, my expectations are a little bit higher. First of all, I don't want a book review to tell me what to think about the book. A book review may recommend not to read the book, but it cannot tell me not to read the book. It shouldn't shame me when I read the book. And least of all, I appreciate if a book review tries to manipulate me by selective and out of context quotations. Trust me, I'm old enough to recognize when I'm being manipulated. So what else do I expect a book review not to do? I expect it not to tell me everything about the book. A book review has a focus and that's decided on by the reviewer. And of course the reviewer cannot address every aspect of a book. So I don't expect that. But I also don't think it's necessary and the job of the book review. I'm coming from a position here of someone who's easily spoiled and doesn't mind reading about a lot of topics. But that doesn't mean I like to read about a lot of topics. So for example, if I don't know a book is about something, I might read it because no one mentioned it or I didn't pay attention, didn't hear it, I'd be like, oh, didn't know that, but okay. Whereas if I know about it, I might not pick it up. The recent example is the Underground Railroad. I'm not interested in reading another slave story at the moment, so I'm not interested in the book. And if I hadn't known that, I might have picked it up already and read it. That's just me and that's how I work and I think a lot of people are like that. They don't need trigger warnings but they are like hey that doesn't interest me so thanks for telling me so I don't read the book. That is where I'm coming from here. When it comes to trigger warnings let me put this clear. Your mental health is your responsibility 
not the book reviews. Just as your interests are your responsibility and not the book reviews. A book review does not have to address all your interests and all your mental health issues. If you have real mental health issues and you are triggered by things, ask. Ask the book reviewer, check out different book reviews, find out on the internet if the book is listed for this particular trigger, if this book review has a community talking about this particular topic, and then don't read it. Don't go to just one book review and expect that book review to cover you. That is not what a book review is for. The same with interests. If you're particularly interested in, for example, LGBTQ topics, which is mentioned a lot that we don't talk about it, which might be true because maybe it's not as important to the reviewer as it is to you. So they don't point it out because they may not have noticed it as much. So it's your responsibility again to find out, hey, does this book have LGBTQ characters? What do you think about it? Are they addressed? Are they not? Follow people who address this topic specifically because they have shared the same interest as you have. And also again, Ask, ask the internet, ask the reviewer, ask Goodreads. There's a section where you can ask questions and people who have read the book will get a notification. Can you answer this question? The same for Amazon. You have a lot of possibilities to find out the information you want, but it's not one book review's responsibility to cover everything a book has to offer. It's just not possible. And it's not a book review's job. I don't think so. I think that a book review is just there to give you an idea and highlight the book reviewers ideas and interests and what they focused on. But that may be different from yours. So you cannot blame a book review or expect from a book review to cover your special interests, your special mental health problems. That's your responsibility. And if you only go to one book review for one book and then you are triggered, that is a problem. The same goes if you only go to one book review and think, oh, this is a terrible book because this, 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 and this. That is uninformation. Check out another book review. Okay, now you can disagree with me. Be respectful, don't shame others, be nice, and tell me your opinion about what you expect and what you think a book review can do and what it can't do. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.